dual core versus hyper threading. A lot of people are searching for whether they would prefer dual core or hyper threaded, but I'm going to actually spin this as multi core versus hyper threaded because these days a lot more things have more than just two cores. So I'm looking at the i7 processors spec sheet and it lists four cores with eight threads. Now, basically what happens in this scenario is that you've got four physical cores, four physical CPUs, and they're on one processor. So they, it's not like the old days where we used to plug four processors into a motherboard. These days the processors are on the CPU and that's faster for memory pass through and load sharing and the sharing of things like the cache that this has six megs of. So an i5 processor will often have four cores but not hyper threading. So it will be four cores with four threads instead of four cores with eight threads. Now knowing whether you need the extra threads is really a function of how you use your processor. But on a Windows machine, often you've got 30 or 40 background processes running at any given time. And by having multiple threads, those background processes will steal less of the resources of the things that you're running in the foreground. If you're playing a game like Quake or Doom or anything that's a real modern first person shooter, it probably supports four cores. And it is going to pretty efficiently use all four of those cores. As such, you can get four primary threads running that are going to consume 70 to 80 percent of your CPU cycles. And the background process can then be divvied up across the rest of those cores in order to keep Windows running in the background and your email happening and your instant messenger and your Skype and all of those things. Now, without hyper threading, what generally is going to happen is the game is going to consume three of those processes and Windows and its background processes are going to use that fourth core for it. So you're going to get about 75% of the performance that you would with a hyper-threaded four-core system. Now, you have to make the decision about whether or not the price difference between, say, an i5 and an i7 is worth it based on the way you use your computer. If you were just running Excel spreadsheets or AutoCAD or some of those things, you may not see a difference between the speed of an i5 and the speed of an i7 because you may not be able to do enough things with concurrency in order to get those benefits. If you're running a dedicated process, you may also not see those benefits. Uh, lots of times when I'm playing games, I have an alternate boot of Windows that runs with just the game being play because I'm fanatical about the performance that I'm going to get out of that game. That's a royal pain. I mean, the ability, having a separate install so that you can log in and check your email is not how most people use their system. So in those cases, the extra 50 to to $100 difference that an i5 versus an i7 will probably cost you can be well worth it to get the i7 so that you don't have to do all of that internal management. But again, it's a function of what your budget is and how you use your computer. So make the decision based on the way you do things, what your target use is, and the way you plan to spend your money. I mean, saving yourself four hours of building an alternate build of Windows so that you don't have to have multi-threading, if you make ten dollars an hour you burned through fifty bucks so your time is worth something as well um, it's going to vary a lot based on the types of software you're running I do a lot of video processing stuff and because I'm using some very old tools 
lots of times I don't get any benefit from hyper threading. I use one core a hundred percent of the time and so on the particular machines that I'm running that on I didn't opt for i7s. I went with i5s because I can run two processes and assign each one to a core and get a hundred percent use out of them and still have two cores left for windows and things like that running. In other places I do run i7s because I'm doing things that are lots of tasks at the same time or the software has been optimized for more than four cores. Uh, video compression work is often now able to happen in six or eight processes because of slicing of the image or slicing of the temporal which portions of the image are being used. And so I can see 30 or 40 percent increase on those systems running an i7 versus an i5. So again it varies wildly based on the, what you're trying to do as to whether or not you'll get any benefit out of an i7 versus an i5. When in doubt go with the i7, the extra money is not that much and use the i5s when you're talking about building farms of computers that you know you're going to use them in that way or if you're looking at discount laptops and you're saying what am I going to send my kid to college with you probably don't want them playing games go with the i5 because of the the price point you know and say hey that extra hundred bucks is a trip home in the car for gas at Christmas you know those kinds of things so lots of decisions I can't tell you which one to buy there are pros and cons to each but knowing how you use your computer will determine which is the right processor for you